Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Volcano AC and in this episode I will be showing you how to reamp using Studio One 6 artist version. We will go from this to this. In case you don't know what reamping means, it basically means recording direct into the DAW your guitar dry without any real amplifier and then sending the dry track out of the DAW, passing the signal through an amplifier and then having the signal go back to the DAW. And yes, I said Studio One artist version in case you haven't decided to upgrade to Studio One 7 Pro yet. I should note that the Pro version of Studio One has a plugin called Pipeline XT that makes reamping easy and straightforward. So if you plan to reamp a lot, then definitely it's worth upgrading to Studio One 7 Pro version. Also, if you have outboard gear like analog compressors or channel strips and you want to send your signal out from Studio One and bring it back, definitely the Pro version will be ideal because Pipeline XT accounts for the latency of the signal. In addition, you can use Pipeline XT to save routing settings and make the overall outboard gear and reamping experience smooth. More on Pipeline XT in a future video. In this video, I'll show you how to send your signal out to the amplifier and back to the DAW. To adjust for latency, though, you will have to match your reamp recording to the original dry track manually, since Pipeline XT is not available in the artist version. So, we need five items to perform the reamping process. These are, first, we need a track with a guitar recorded dry. I just recorded my electric guitar by connecting the guitar cable into the instrument input of my audio interface and recorded it straight into the DAW. Note that some people use DI boxes to record the dry signal before the audio interface since they are supposed to deliver the most pure signal of your guitar into the audio interface. In my case, I have the Apollo X6 audio interface, which captures instruments directly connected with high clarity, so I don't need to use a DI box for this video. But if your audio interface doesn't have an instrument input or if it does not record instruments directly with high quality, then I would definitely recommend using a DI box. Second, we need an audio interface with sufficient ins and outs. In my case, I have the Apollo X6, like I said, which has six analog outputs besides the two analog speaker outputs and it also has six analog line ins and also two mic inputs. So I could route the signal back to the DAW by micing a real cab or even through the line input using an amp loader like the Boss Wasa tube amp expander here behind me. Third, we need a reamping box. The job of the reamping box is to convert the balance line level signal coming out of the audio interface to an unbalanced high C signal to match what the amplifiers and guitar pedals are expecting. I have the Walrus Canva reamping box, which I'll use in this video. I like this Walrus Canva reamping box because it has a volume knob that helps adjust 
how hard the signal will hit the amp. It has a useful mute button, a ground leaf button that I often use to reduce noise, a face button to invert the face by 180 degrees if needed, and even it has a 200 Hz high pass filter button. Fourth, we need an amplifier, and in my case, I will use the PV65052, 120 watts amplifier. And number five, we need either a microphone to mic a speaker that is on a cab, or if not using a real speaker, then a load box to bring the signal back to the DAW. All right. Let me show you the settings in Studio One to send the signal out. Let's get into it. All right, and we are here in Studio One and in this orange track is where I recorded my clean guitar. Let's hear it quickly. All right, that's how it sounds. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna press Command, Comma, right there to take us to preferences. I think in Windows might be control comma, but in case you don't get it like that, you go up here where it says Studio One, click there and in preferences, you'll see what's your shortcut. So just click and here you go to song setup right there and you will see your inputs. You can see the first one that shows up in my um, Audio interface is the left and right stereo in case I want to use mic, line, or instrument inputs. Or if I want to do it in mono, left and right. So right now, let me rename the left input because I'm using the Shure SM7DB microphone right there. And in the right input, I'm going to bring the recording from the amp with the Shure SM57 microphone. So that'll be a good way for me to know where it's coming back. But in the case I'm using an amp loader to bring the signal straight uh, to one of these line level uh, inputs, then I can call this amp loader very easy like that. And then I'll just need to make sure that I connect right there. So I click apply over here. And now let's move to the outputs, which for us today, it's gonna be extremely important. This is the main. One goes mono to the left and the other one to the right, because basically this goes to the speakers and we could rename it like that or just keep it as main like this. So we wanna add a line um, output. So click, um, add over there and then let's make sure it's a mono signal and this one could be line one out like that and we could use this one but just for an example I'll add another one and again it wants to give it to me in stereo but I want mono and this specific one I'm gonna call it out to to amp. So I don't get confused when I'm labeling later and choosing the routing. So and with that, you will see inputs just like we modify and the outputs just like we modify. So I need to make sure to go to my line number two, so that this can go to the amplifier. And when it comes back, it's going to come back in my Shure SM57 microphone, which I already labeled over there. So I'm going to press now the letter T. There it is. And it's going to give you the option to bring a track. So you don't need instrument track or anything like that. You want the audio one. And red color is fine. Make sure it's mono, which is good. If you like different color, just click there and choose it. So um, I'll click OK, and you can see it's going to come back from the Shure SM57. I can choose it right there, because otherwise this will be the microphone I'm using right now. So back to the Shure SM57 microphone. And um, the next step, we're going to go where it says Mix down here to the bottom right. And 
something that you need to notice is which is the input which is the for each track it is this part right here but which is the output and you can see it says the main and the main so the main what is the main it's the main boss right here as you can read at the bottom right as well so that is where we need to change our direct guitar track instead of going to the main we wanted to go out to which is going to the amp okay and then this one we could uh, choose it uh, we, from where it comes from so it's going to come from the Shure SM57 remember it's the microphone but if it's coming from an amp loader that'll be my line number three just change like that and that will make things happen so back to the SM57 microphone and now we are ready uh, to get the recording just let me change the name and call it reamped like that and you can have as many as many tracks to be reamped and that's the beauty of this because um, basically uh, you can do this track with one amp and another track with a different amp and so on or change the settings of this amp or add pedals here no pedals in the next ones and so on so that's pretty cool all right so now we can turn this on and i need to make sure that my amp is on and we're gonna start the reamping process Alright, let me know if you found this process easy. The beauty of reamping is that you can record with different settings on the same amp until you're happy with the sound that you're looking for. Also, you can choose different amplifiers or record one amp to the left and one amp to the right, however you would like to mix your sound. Your guitar recording is not locked with a particular sound that has been baked in at the original recording stage. This flexibility is gold in a recording studio. All right, and that is all for this episode. If you like this video, don't forget to smash the like button. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.